Well, hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Miss Crochet and Coffee here. And today we have a flip through. Now, this week on the channel, you'll probably see a little bit more coloring than you will diamond painting. Don't fret. There will be a couple of aspects of diamond painting on the channel this week, but I am getting all my Amazon Prime Day stuff in. So I will be doing a massive haul of that. This is actually one of those items and the next flip through I do is another one of those items um, because I got these from Prime Day. So I will be going and doing a flip through of both of these and I think I'm just going to do them in one video because why not, right? Right. All right. So we're going to go through the Mandala book first and then we'll get to the fairies. So you guys have been asking me to check out Jade Summers and I'm like, okay. Now, I'm very weird with my taste in coloring books. I like stuff like this with the mandalas. I love, I love fairies. So I decided to check out some of her stuff, and I picked out a couple. Now, I want to try grayscale. I am scared to death because I've never done grayscale. I have markers and stuff coming because I don't have any markers yet. Uh, I have some more color pencils and stuff coming. You will see all that in probably the next video. But... I wanted to check out Jade Summers, so I grabbed a couple of her books and went, let's have at it. So we're going to put fairies off to the side here, and we're going to take a look at the Mandela coloring book. So the Mandela coloring book, I like this because it gives me a chance to practice like that shading and stuff that I want to learn how to do, but not necessarily on faces because where I don't mind faces, the skin tone thing after a while gets kind of old to me. So I wanted to practice on flowers. Now in diamond painting, I'm not the biggest fan of flowers, but in coloring, I love flowers because there's all kinds of different shading and stuff that you can put on them. So, and because I didn't want the curve of having the grayscale first, I went for what they call the color and fill where it's just blank and you fill it in with the, the color and the shading and the stuff yourself. Like I know they say do the grayscale first, but I do a lot of things ass backwards. So yeah. Either way, let's look into this book, shall we? Now, this is Flower Mandalas, and I will, of course, link both these books down in the comment, or not the comment section, because I can't post them there, but in the description box. So look down in the description box if you would like a copy of these two books. So here we go. Now, it gives you kind of like a table of contents of what is all in the book. I do love that, obviously. I love that because that's how the Hannah Lynn books are. I like knowing and not having to essentially flip through each page and being able to go, oh, okay, I wanna color this one today. So I do love that. And there's quite a bit in here. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to get to the other book today or in this video. If I can't, of course, there'll be a part two. And in part two, I'll go through the fairies book, but we'll talk about that when we get through this. So yes. And I did take the time to practice in the book because I was like, you know, if I'm going to have the book, I might as well practice in the book. Right. Right. Anyways. So this is the first and only page that I've colored in the book. I wanted to try out my, I got some new color pencils and I wanted to try them out. So I did. It's not the best looking color page in the world, but I think I did pretty good. Um, there's still a couple of little things after seeing it done here that I want to add to it. But for the most part, I actually really enjoy coloring this. I loved everything about it. The flowers, the vines, the uh, little pattern on the outside. I loved it. So yeah, so I know I'm going to love this book. The other thing about this book that I love is that all the pages are blacked out on the other side. So you can see kind of, I don't know if you can see it up there, but in he right here where I'm sitting, you can see kind of indentations from when I was pressing down with my color pencils. And so it's not going to bleed over into this. So I might be able to even use my markers or even my jelly rolls on this. And I'm not the biggest fan of the jelly rolls. And I'll get into that a little bit later. Either way, this is page two. Isn't it beautiful? Like the flowers and then you have like the rose, the, like the buds and then they, they grow out. Like I love that. Oh my goodness. I like color and fill just because it gives me that chance to be as creative as I want to be, whether I want to make it look flat, which is just, you know, normal coloring, or if I want to add all those extras to make it look more realistic. And I am still learning, so it's going to take me a bit to get there. 
but I just love the flower patterns in here and then the ideas that come from that and uh, I was talking to JJ Space here on YouTube and she likes to go through on Pinterest and find color families and essentially what that is is that it's a uh, ooh, look at that one I love the lines these here the leaves those green leaves and these almost look like peace lilies oh gorgeous but uh, sh color families are essentially, they'll pack a, a set of like four or five colors together to show you that, you know, they go well together. And she's been helping me find some of those to help me with my coloring stuff. Oh my gosh, that's really cool looking. That almost looks like a decorative lamp or something. Like the lampshade. That's so cool. So yes, lots of flowers, lots of flowers. And again, I will do something where I color in the coloring books. I just, I have to get my confidence up with my coloring first because, you know, I'm still learning. So I don't want to show anybody any bad habits that I might have that might not be good for somebody else. Because even though I'm learning, that one has a lot of intricate little leaves. I'm not sure. And that's the thing. With the little ones, you can't really, I don't know how to make those look realistic because they're so small. I like like the bigger images like this where I can make this look more realistic. There's not a whole lot that I think that you can do with these little ones, but as I take this adventure into coloring, I'm sure I will learn. But I like the bigger images like this that that have like big open spaces so that I can practice being creative because I'm learning that everyone just like in diamond painting has their own coloring style. So what might be good for me might not be good for you. And I've been watching quite a few coloring pages and uh, getting advice and tips on things that I can do to better my coloring. And I'm actually pretty excited about it. I'm pretty excited about it. I like the, the round ones because I like doing the background. But with having all these little intricate pieces, sometimes the background can be a little hard to do. Because then you got to find the background because like even like right here, you're trying to figure out if this piece goes to the flower. Oh, good gravy. So yes, I love this kind of like a kaleidoscope where it gives you the same thing over and over again. So you have four of the same thing. It's just, you know, cut into whatever. That's really cool. Here's another kaleidoscope image. And I, I don't mind the kaleidoscopes. And I'm usually not a fan of mandalas. I like abstract. So like with the weird squiggly lines and stuff. And I do have a book coming with that. Um, I also have another grayscale book that I ordered this morning. Which... Today's Monday. You'll see this Tuesday. So yeah. Oh my God, isn't that gorgeous? And I, and that's the thing. There's it's not anything in particular. Like there's flowers and of course there's leaves, but then you have like these little intricate detailed uh, whatever dilly doos on the top here. Oh my God, how pretty is that? And there are quite a few pages in here. Like and they're all black on the back so I think that is also to help to keep from the markers and stuff bleeding if you choose to use markers and it also helps for when you're coloring on something on this page for it also for not for it not to bleed through but it also shouldn't ruin the work on the page in front of it either so that's actually a really good idea and from what I've heard, you know, you want pages something like this. You don't want them to be double-sided because if they're double-sided, then, you know, you might, your, your ink might bleed on one side or uh, the indentations from another color might come through on the back of another page. And you don't want that. So you want them to be one-sided. So that's one thing I have learned. Look at these roses. Ugh, can't wait. And these kind of look, this kind of looks like a, this looks like one of those, like, I like to call it the ballerina flowers because, like, have you seen them with the bulbs on top and then, like, the bottom of them look like a skirt? And these actually have, like, the squiggles that come out. That's a really cool design. I can't wait to color that one. Ooh, that's pretty. That kind of almost looks Christmassy almost with the, they look like bows up top here. That's pretty cool. <gasps> oh. We got vines. I love vines. Because you can gradiate them from dark to light. So, yeah. Ooh, look at that. 
this kind of looks like a lotus flower almost and if you were to like cut that in half like that's the top half and that's the bottom half I love how they did that I absolutely love this book and I don't think it was more than like nine bucks and I know they have like really expensive coloring books out there right now I'm not looking for anything really expensive only because I'm just now learning so I don't need anything too extravagant and I want to focus more on getting supplies and showing you guys what is good what is bad what not to get what to get and I have quite a few things coming so I can't wait for you guys to see it but these are definitely tulips that's that's a tulip right there that's a tulip and I like how it has like the silhouette I guess you could say on the outside of it and then these two here I'm not sure what kind of flower these are but love that oh that's so pretty Ooh, looky there. And if you're like a botanist, I think that's what they're called, like people that love flowers, this is definitely a book that you would love because it just so, so many flowers, so many little lines, just, ugh. I really, really like this book. There's a big old, that almost looks kind of like a hibiscus flower maybe. And if I'm saying these flowers wrong, don't mind me because I don't know a whole lot about flowers. I know I like tulips. I know what roses are. That's that's about the just of my flowers and dandelions. But other than that, I know about poinsettias too. Yeah, anyways. Anyways, I don't know a whole lot about flowers. I know something about something, but not a whole lot. So, And as you can see, there are tons and tons of pages. I absolutely love them just all the open space for you to color and you could you could color the outside of it but I've been leaving that part blank and then just focusing on this part like I did for the first image I'm only focusing on the mandala itself and then maybe later on if I get an idea that sparks me I'll work on the background but for me for right now I'm only focusing on the mandala the mandala part so Ooh, the lines in that. Now that you can put some incredible detail into. You can, uh, and essentially, from what I'm learning, you do like the rule of three when it comes to blending. So it's dark. You put the light layer on, and then the medium layer, and then the darker layer. So like a light green, a medium green, and then a dark green at the bottom, and then you just kind of nicely blend them together. Really, really like that one. Can't wait to color that one. Ooh. That's interesting. I love how they have so many of these going around. You can make those all different colors. You can make them all the same color and then make the outside of this flower colorful. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be so pretty. I really like that one too. I like the dark lines around this one. And you can do a lot of shading in there as well. But I, I, I have to figure out something or keep, I have to keep watching the channels I'm watching because like, I want to be able to figure out a way to do something more with those than just have them like one shade of something. That one has nice dark lines on it. Love, love, love that one. Like, you guys, there are so many pages in this book. Ooh, that's a mirror image. You see that? How down, straight down the middle here. You can just fold that. And somebody was already asking me about framing. I don't know about framing them for right now because I don't believe they come out. They're not perforated edges, so I would literally have to like tear them out or cut them out of the book to frame it. But um, that's something I'll think about down the road. As of right now, I'm just more so worried about... Uh, coloring them versus trying to frame them maybe at some point I might do something with them but uh for right now I just want to focus on coloring them because I'm learning how to color and that's been loads and loads of fun and like watching different people color is just it, it opens my eyes to how much there really is to know in coloring because you know I just color the way I color and everybody's like you know that looks really nice and I'm like that's not anything really special. That's just how I color it. Look at that. That's cool. 
And usually I'm really intimidated by there being so much stuff to color because then I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I color? What don't I color? You know, should I color this or should I color that? And then I realized, you know what? I'll just color what I want. I'll color what I want, however I want, like, Really, really like that one. And see, I like these like shaped ones, like the ones that aren't just round, they're triangular or prism or whatever you wanna call it. I like those. Gives you something different so you're not getting the same thing. And then that's the end of this book. And then she gives you you can access digital edition of this book at jadesummers.com. Go to digital uh, edition and then use the code, which you have to buy the book to use the code, so I'm gonna hide that. And then get free updates and stuff. Uh, when you join her VIP email list, you can get uh, 50 coloring pages, 50 different books, you know, yada, 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 and then find out what books are up next. And then this is an old book, so, List updated September 28th, 2018. And of course you guys know it is the 2019, it's 2019 and it's July. So it's like July 22nd, I believe today is that I'm recording this. So this is a little bit older, but that just shows you how much stuff she already has out. And you can only imagine what she's had out, what she has out now after a year's time. So, and she also has another book that I was looking at called Springtime Flowers. And it's kind of like the Magical Mandalas, but it's just flowers. So I might get that one, I'm not sure. And then that's the end of that book. And then on the back here, she has some designs that are in the book as well. So let me know what you think. Do you like flower mandalas? Do you not like flower mandalas? Are you not a flower person? Cause you know, I didn't think I was a flower person until I got it. Uh, off the topic a little bit, I did get this book in and I'm debating sending it back this one is from Broad, Broadwick, Broder, Broderick S. Johnson. I love the book. It's about butterflies. Now, what I noticed about the book, you get all these cool butterfly images in this book, but there was a problem. That was supposed to be the end of the book there, but somehow it got turned into a notebook. And so I messaged Amazon and asked them if it was supposed to be that way. They told me no and immediately sent me out a replacement and then told me to return this one. But I'm like, I don't know if I want to return it. Like, that's kind of a special edition because it, you know, I can write notes in there and like doodles and stuff. So like, I don't know. So you'll see a flip through of this one day. But for right now, we're going to focus on Jade Summers. Now, this one is called Fairies. Now, the fairy book is one of my favorites because I love fairies and there's just so much you can do with this book. And again, just like her other book, uh, oh, it includes a free digital copy when you purchase it. So if you have this book, you know, and you didn't see that, yeah, it comes with a free digital copy. And again, I love the fact that the back of the pages are all blacked out. And like I said, they're all like that. So that's really cool. But I love fairies. So like, let's get through this. Oh my gosh, look, she has like a little hummingbird over here. And there's another bird up here. She got her top toss cover with the leaves. Nice big braid and her wings. And then there's a tree and it looks like a path almost. No, these are flowers. Well, that's cool. I have not colored in this book, nor have I fully went through it. These books, when I bought them, because they're less than like nine bucks, I didn't think that they were gonna be this thick. Like they are thick books. Did not expect that. So Jade Summers always gets two big old thumbs up for me because she makes it worth it. I love the braids and I was watching a video of a colorist and she was showing how to color the mermaid braid. And I have been trying to practice that, so I'm hoping that I can do that in this book because a lot of these fairies look like they're gonna have braids in their hair. And of course we have our flower and our tree. And this is what scares me is the, the lines of the trees. I'm not sure if I 
can capture that enough to make it look realistic. Not with the current uh, coloring style that I have. And then we have two fairies here. I actually thought this was a, a dude because the face looks a little bit more masculine. But we're not going to judge because then I looked down and saw that the dude had boobs. So I was like, oh, okay, that's not a dude. Anyways, there's a tree behind them. It looks like they're kneeling in the grass. And I love these little vine things that they have on their legs. So that's really cool. And then we have like little kid fairies playing with fruits. And this shows you, it kind of gives you a scale of how big they are because she's holding a strawberry. I'm not exactly sure. That might be a plum or something. And it looks like they're coming down from a mountain and they're in a patch of flowers. So that's cool. And we have this fairy. Does anybody ever wear, wonder where fairies get their clothes? Asking for a friend. Anyways. So this one has a unicorn friend. And they're in the forest as well. So you can see the trees and the grass and the rocks. And I love how detailed the images are. And I think this would be considered a like a very, very teeny tiny light type of grayscale almost because it gives you some of the gray that you can color in on like some of the items and that's something i noticed in a few of these okay that's kind of sad so we have a little fairy mourning the loss of her friend she still has the braids though like i can still do those braids And then we have this one here. She has like a little squirrel friend over here in a tree eating an acorn. She has little bows and flowers on her dress. She has very, very long hair and her wings. And then she has bird friends here and leaves and the trees. So yeah, she gives you plenty to work with here. She gives you plenty to practice all the shading and blending that your little heart can desire. So I love that. And these are all like nature type scenes. So yeah. So if you have tried Jade Summers, which book do you have? And if you haven't, do you think you want to try a Jade Summers? Because I saw a couple of her images and I was just like, eh, I'll have to go look for myself. And then when I did, I found this one. Definitely yes. Definitely yes. If you haven't tried her, get at least one book and see what you think. And here she's taking an egg from what looks like a hawk. She thinks it's funny until that hawk gets a hold of her. <laughs> Here we go. We got one that found a man. Mm. Now, can men be fairies? Are there, are there boy fairies? And are they called fairies? Somebody answer that down in the comments. I always wondered that. Cause like, they can't be a normal sized man unless fairies come in adult sizes. Like the most fairies in the book already that I've, we've seen, they're smaller type, they're small scale. So if this is a normal sized man, like she has to be a normal sized fairy, obviously. And then again, with the grayscale, the reason why I'm thinking this is a type of grayscale, and it's not like the super, super like saturated grayscale. And grayscale, if you don't know what it is, it's a black and white photo that you color and it, it essentially it tells you, it, sh it gives you like a guide to where some of the shading should be. So like here in her ponytail, how it's gray in areas and then lighter in others, you just color over it and then, uh, it'll sh essentially show you how to make that like in this image you want here on his arm to be darker because it's shadowed because you know if they're laying in the sun the sun's beating down this part's going to be shadowed because of his arm laying the way it is so that's darker and then out here is lighter because it's in the sunshine and then like you see like on her lap here where his head is around his head is a little bit darker on the side of her arm and then her ponytail as well so i do like the grayscale. i wanted to give it a try and then here we go. This fairy's got the right idea. She's taking a coffee break. You know, even they need coffee break. I love the fact that they made it look realistic to like humans. Like they gave her slippers. She has papers all over the floor. She's just sitting in her chair reading her book. She has a vase of flowers. She has a bookshelf over here. She has pictures on her wall, but she has also has vines. And then her hair, hashtag messy hair, don't care. Like, Got a little elf ear sticking out there. Well, I guess it'll be a fairy ear because you can't be an elf and a fairy. Yeah. Now this one, I did see this one. This is the image that made me buy the book. You guys know I love celestial stuff. So having the moon and the stars and her hair and like what looks like a lotus flower 
And she's just, and there's a diamond painting that looks like this. Doesn't look exactly like this, but it does look like this. And I'm just like, oh, yes, 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 yes. Because you can make that moon like a light tannish color, but then the background can be a dark blue and then make your stars yellow. And then these things can be like, uh, almost like a silver color. Oh my God, it's going to be so pretty. And then we have this fairy here who's not wearing any clothing. Luckily, she's covering up the bits and all the goods. But she has some very intricate wings. And then that's going to be the interesting part for me because I've never colored wings before. So, yeah, that's going to be something new for me. But this is supposed to be fun. It's trying new things that we haven't tried before. You know, take a step out of our comfort zone. Do new things. That's the only way to try things. And then she is, it looks like she's almost in a marsh or a swamp or something because like she has like the tall grass here and then the trees and then all the flowers and lily pads. Here we go. This girl's just doing her thing, minding her business. And then this gigantic eye shows up in the peephole of her dough. That's kind of messed up. She has her little knife on the side of her leg there. This one is just adorable, okay? This is just flat out adorable. You have the wings of the butterflies and then you have the flower, the big flower at that. It's not even a little flower, it's a big flower. She's eating or drinking something. Looks like she has ponytails maybe in her hair. She has her wings and then like the tall grass and stuff around her. And then there's a, quite a few like little bugs around her. So yeah, that's, and she looks like she has gloves on. And she's on a really pretty dress. And that's what I like about coloring. You can create it and make it how you want. And there's no wrong way to do it. You do it how you want to do it. So we have this one here. And I don't think she's a fairy. But the fairies, the four fairies in the picture are like dolling her up. So they're giving her flowers for her hair. But she has to be a fairy. Her ears are pointed. So maybe she's just an elf. I don't think they can retract their wings or anything because she doesn't have any wings, but she has the ears. So we'll have to we'll have to look into that. And then we have this fairy. I don't not sure what she's doing, but it looks badass. All right, so she has uh, the trees behind her. She looks like she's in uh, water, and then there's a rose or a flower coming out. She's summoning something, maybe. And she has tears coming out of her eyes too, so maybe she lost someone. So like these pictures can be interpreted many different ways. Everybody has their own interpretation of things. So this is just how I'm seeing it. So, you know, if you see something else, you know, how about it? Is this a griffin? This looks like a griffin. And then you got a fairy up top here and then a fairy here trying to, you know, lead the griffin somewhere. And then you have like the mother nature fairy, which do fairies have to have wings? Probably not. I'm not sure what this is. I was gonna say it was a moose, but it's face just, I, I don't know. That face, it looks like an ox or something. Anyways, she has birds and like a little fox down here. And then she has an owl here. Looks like she has antlers. Do fairies have antlers? I'm learning all kinds of new things, folks. Love this. She's sitting on a skull. She has her wings, cute dress, nice boots. You know that one boot, like, I don't know how she's walking with a curved heel, but, you know, she's doing her thing. And then she's got something hovering. It looks like a diamond almost. And she's crying. So that's really cool. We got lovers here. We got the fairy and the dude. Now the dude, I think this is a regular dude because he has regular ears. Yes, I'm on the ear thing, if you can't tell. But he has regular ears, but she has like the, the elf ears. And then she has like a flower in her hair. We're gonna leave them to what they're doing. We gonna mind our business. All right, and then we have this adventurous little fairy. She's ready for an adventure. And I'm not sure, I wanna say this is some kind of weird rabbit or a, a, a mouse or a rat, because look at the tail. Either way, she's found a flag. 
she, she's going on some kind of adventure. And then you got fairies helping fairies in the bear family and like a little foxy thing here and some a bunny. They got like mama bear. But do you see what I mean by the like the light touch of grayscale because of the the shading? It's the shading. And see, for some reason in this one, I want to make her boot her boot like a golden yellow. She has like a dragon with her. That's pretty cool. I really like that one. Oh my goodness, look how cute. You got a sleepy little fairy in a cup. She's in a teacup. And then there's berries next to her. And a, tea, a teapot. It's like a sugar shaker. And then you got like cabinets. She's in somebody's kitchen. Hopefully they're not drinking her. I, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. And then you got this fairy here. She's fishing. There's a crab over here. She's all excited. She caught this poor little fish. That fish was caught off guard, or he's always shocked. <laughs> and then you got this one here with the bird nesting the eggs, and she's comforting the bird as she's nesting her eggs. This one here, she's at the fairy market, maybe? Because they got like fruits and stuff and she's got like a little satchel. I like how they do some of them that are like mythical and then some of them that are like down to earth like them doing normal human things like having coffee or going to the farmer's market and stuff like that. And then there's other ones like this where she's playing with what looks like a dog or a bunny and she's in the woods. And then you have this beautiful fairy here. And she's just laying on a branch with a flower in her hand. She has very intricate, detailed uh, bust for the top of her dress. And then she has flowers on her hip. That tree is going to be awesome to color. And I think I want to say this is maybe mountains. If they're not, I'm going to make them mountains anyways. And then this is the one that's on the front of the book. So that's what it looks like uncolored. And then with color. So that's pretty cool. And again, with the braid. Now does the book copy itself? Yes. So that I didn't realize. Okay, because I thought I saw that image once. And it does. So it looks like it's mirror of the book. Now, I wish they would have put something there to tell you, you know, this is the second set of pages or in the Hannah Lynn book how they're back to back but it literally has two of every image so you can practice on one image and then do your real drawing and coloring on the other so yeah love that so those are the two Jade Summer books that I have if you like them the link for each of these books is going to be in the description box down below so please check there if you would like to get your own copies of these tell me what you think down in the comments did you like them did you not like them uh see i don't think this one doubled but this one did so i'm wondering if her other books like this double and if you have another one of her books that's like this uh fairies book and it does double please leave that down in the comments help us this out i'm still learning here folks anyways that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video and would like to see more just like this one or with my diamond paintings, please give this video a thumbs up or give it a thumbs down at this point. I don't give a crap either way. If you aren't a subscriber and would like to subscribe, please feel free to hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified anytime I randomly decide to put up a video. And believe me, it's random. Before I go, I will show you these because you're probably wondering, you know, what's up with your nails? These are Color Street. I got them, I actually won these. Uh, Creativity by Gidge was running a uh, contest on her channel and I actually won for once, like I was shocked. So these are called, uh, and I just put them on last night, which is hilarious. They're called Laurel Gardens. It was a, one, it was a set out of her own stash and I wanted something that wasn't too dark but wasn't too light and these are like, Perfect. So I love them. 
I also have Creativity by Gage Color Street uh, website linked down below. So you just got to scroll down a little bit. There's all kinds of links down in the description box if you just keep scrolling. But anyways, that's it for me. Going to bid you adieu now so I can go back to mommy mode. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I do greatly appreciate each and every one of you that take the time out of your busy days and schedules to watch. Whether you're doing it because you love my channel or not. Either way, I'm going to bid you adieu and remind you to always try to be kind, be courteous, be cool. Bye guys.